Welcome once again. Let's talk about waiting and how frustrating that can be. Yes, my friends, waiting can be frustrating. So we're going to talk about different types of waiting. And many of you, perhaps that was your recent discussion with a friend. You've been thinking about it. And honestly, you've been praying to God saying, God, what's up? Why am I waiting so long? When are you going to give me my big break? And so forth. So let's get right into it. First of all, what does the Bible says about waiting? For they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Because waiting tends to weaken you. Waiting tends to uh, frustrate you and get you to a place where you're just exhausted and you've, you've lost strength. And what the Word of God is encouraging you and me to do is to gain our strength in waiting, but make sure that we wait upon the Lord, not wait for somebody to do something for us or we doing things for ourselves, but they who wait upon the Lord on the Lord. So I think the first thing you need to ask yourself is simply this, whatever you're waiting for, is that truly God's will for your life? I mean, there's no need to to sugarcoat this. I mean, if you are a person and you're saying, okay, you're waiting for a job, right? It's God's will for you to have a job, right? For you to sustain yourself. He uses your employment or your place of business uh, to bring resources into your life. So, um, you know, of course, he wants you to get a job. So don't think that God's punishing you and he's um, holding past sins against you. A lot of people think that way because they're messed up and they did things that maybe God is punishing them now for sins committed, right? Uh, but God wants you to be blessed. So when you say, God, I need a job, you ought to believe that God wants you to have that job. However, God has a set time for that job. When you're asking God, get me out of my financial situation, and there's somebody listening and watching me right now, you've been waiting for God to give you your big break when it comes to your finances. You know, you want to get out of debt, you want to pay off your credit cards, your car loans, and you want to put some money in your savings, you want to pay off your house, you want to get money to buy a house, and and the list goes on and on. And uh, you've been waiting for a long time and you're just thinking, God, I'm just frustrated, man. When are you going to come through for me? Listen, if you've done your part, if you know you've done your part, then just wait upon the Lord because you're going to gain strength in waiting. In fact, I firmly believe waiting on God will produce more than what you're expecting God to do in your life. When you wait on God, you don't miss a beat, you don't make mistakes, you don't get things prematurely, and you don't mess up your life. Wait on the Lord. You know, so many people, you know, I know the waiting for them is frustrating. So when they want something now, they got to have it now. I want that car now. So instead of waiting on the Lord to gain strength and a strategy on, on how to maybe get the money, buy the car cash, or maybe buy a used car right now until you can get another, you know, until you graduate and climb the ladder of success and can purchase a car cash and so forth. Instead of we doing that, we rush out, we don't wait on God, and we go and, you know, um, you know, Satan is very subtle. He'll find a car dealership that will make the deal work for you. So here it is. Now you go get a car and you're paying 28%, 18% on a loan. Think about that. On a loan, on a used car, four years, five years, a new car, seven years, eight years of payment, not understanding that, you know, the blessings of the Lord, the Bible says it make it rich and it adds no sorrow. It, when God bless you, it is not going to create. Now, the enemy may cause you to think that you're under pressure, but God will never bless you and let the blessing be a pressure to you. Are you hearing me? So I think it's so important that each of you recognize that waiting can be frustrating, but you must wait. 
You must wait. You must wait on the Lord. In fact, you ought to stop doing what you're doing, meaning you ought to stop making, you know, quick decisions. Uh, You ought to stop making decisions that are driven by your emotions and start making decisions that are spirit-led. So wait on the Lord. He'll get you that house. What you need to do in the meantime, make sure you get a job, you build your credit, you put some money in the bank. Okay, make sure you can maintain where you live because if you, let's say you're living in an apartment and it's, it's say $2,000 a month and, you know, utilities and everything's another $2,000. If, if you're screaming and you're barely making it and you don't have no savings and so forth, you may have a desire now to go get a $400,000, dollars worth of mortgage. It may be a, a desire. Yes, that's wonderful. I'm not going to take that away from you. But now your mortgage is going to be 3000 3500 then your utilities are even more, and so forth. If you can't manage where you are right now, why would you put that kind of a pressure on yourself to go get something just because it's a good thing, just because they can make the deal work? No. Timing is everything. You got to wait on the Lord. He'll give you that deal. Wait on the Lord when he comes to applying for a job, you know. Wait on the Lord. Don't rush things. Speak to God. Let the Holy Spirit lead you. Use your common sense, you know, because sometimes I can't tell you how many times people uh, get frustrated at a job. Okay, maybe because it's not paying them enough money. Uh, Some people get frustrated at the job because the boss is getting on their nerves and there's chaos, dysfunction. It is a toxic environment. Uh, Some people think they're mistreated and, and I get all of that. Um, and so forth, but, but a lot of times what we do, we, we make, you know, really quick decisions and emotional decisions and we get angry. We tell off everybody and we walk out away from the, uh, walk away, I should say from the company. And we go and we said, I don't need this job because we've convinced ourselves that we can do better and so forth. And that may be true, but in a lot of cases, there are people who've walked away from their jobs and made the biggest mistake of their lives. You know, I remember I shared this uh, personal testimony over and over. I can recall I was working at a particular place, and I, I, I didn't like it there, man. Oh, it was horrible. My supervisor was horrible, man, and it was a tough thing for me. I didn't like it, man. I, it, it was horrible. I, I struggled at that place, so finally I came up with a plan, In fact, that was not my field. I didn't like that job. So travel and tourism was really what I was trained for. And I decided I'm going to just go and apply at Eastern Airlines. I applied at Eastern Airlines for a job as a flight attendant. And there were three levels, I believe it was, that you had to pass. Passed all three of them. Was offered a job now with Eastern Airlines. And I felt that, you know, my wait was over. God, man, my wait was over. I don't want to deal with um, this company anymore. And, and my attitude, you know, my attitude, especially when you know you're leaving, you know, I was kind of a little bit of cocky, you know, with my attitude and so forth. But then I had sense enough to go to God and say, God, all right, I'm about to leave this place. I, I'm, I typed up my resume and before I turned it in, that's when I prayed. You know, I might have done it too late, but it's better late than never. You know, I consulted God. And I said, you know, I want to leave this place. What do you think, God? Da, 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 da. And I really wanted God to sanction what I was doing. I wanted God to sanction the mess I was about to create in my life. And isn't that what a lot of us are doing? We, we come up with our own plans and desires and think it's wonderful. Then we go to God, kind of praying in a way for God to sanction our mess. But he spoke to me and he said, don't leave your job. <laughs> Listen, man, when he told me that, I was like, are you kidding me? I've waited for this moment. And some of you know what I'm talking about. After you've done all your planning you know, ready now to make that move. And you're thinking, that's it for me. I mean, God said, don't go. But I had enough sense. I mean, I really wanted to go. But you see, I was always, you know, surrendering to the Holy Spirit. And I says, no, I'm not going to go. 
I ripped up the, um, the resignation letter. And I stayed on that job reluctantly because I was like, God, this wait is too long. I need a break. I, you know, constantly, I need a break. I need a break, financial break. I need a break with a place where I'm happy, da 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 da, whatever. Well, two weeks later, Eastern Airlines filed for bankruptcy, went bellied up, you know the story, and that was it. I was about to leave, and I stayed on that job, I think it was more than five years uh, later, before I started the church. I stayed on that job, but the beauty of my story is that, um, you know, um, Eastern Airlines, after they went bankrupt, I stayed on the job. The company promoted me. I was making decent money. But now what the company did, I went to a lot of seminars and training. They poured a lot of money into the employees and into me that I was able to get certain basic uh, leadership, administrative training and God did that. So when I started pastoring, right, I not only had the word to give the people, but I had that leadership skill. God kept me on the job longer than I wanted to, to help me be a better, not just a preacher, but a better manager of the business aspect of ministry. Now, I wanted out. I wanted to leave. I wanted to go. And could it be that God is saying the weight that is frustrating you is really preparation for the next season that God's going to put you in? Don't rush God. Don't you rush him. I'm telling you, don't you? I know you've been praying, but don't you rush him. You know, recently I was talking to a, 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 a gentleman who we invited years ago to the church, um, Darwin uh, Hobbs. He's a, an artist, you know, and a musical artist. And, uh, you know, he, he just reached out to me on social media. So, you know, um, left me his number. And I thought that was very unique. And I called him. He was totally shocked that I would return his call. And I said, hey, man, how you doing? And we were talking and, you know, he re was re re kind of reminding me of when he was coming to our church when we were younger and a small ministry and so forth. And then he started sharing his testimony about he and his wife, how they've been waiting for so many years. I think if I'm not mistaken, um, for about 20 years or something like that, he and his wife, they got married. They've been waiting for children. Nothing could happen. And the wait is frustrating. I can just imagine for him. But then he told me, you've got two children. Kind of like my story. We waited for, God knows, 16 years. That wait was not easy. It was frustrating. But then when I look back, I may not know the complete plan of God, but I can tell you, looking back now, I am like, okay, God, I can see why you delayed that. Because I firmly believe, had I started having kids when I just got married or within the first few years of my marriage, I don't think I would have taken the ministry to the level where it is today. You know, I, I, cause you know, I poured my all. There was no distraction with children. I poured my all into the ministry. I was able to travel a lot, do a lot of stuff. Because when I became a father, everything changed. Every, everything. No longer the ministry took priority. It was my kids. I wanted to make sure I didn't miss that moment, you know, because at the end of the day, they're grown now. They're in, one is almost getting ready to graduate from college. The other one just finished his first year in college. So after a while, I'm done with them, you know, and, and they can go ahead and live their lives and so forth. But, but I was put on delay to make sure I was better prepared to be a father. Could it be that God is delaying certain things just to prepare you for the greater that is yet to come so you don't fumble the ball, so you don't mess up, so you don't do stupid things that would make people scratch their head and thinking, what were you thinking? Some of you, I know you're kind of like, ah, God, I, I want to get married real quick, especially women. 
You want to get married and the desperation is there. Your age, everything like that. And 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 you'd be shocked to see some of the things women will do just to get married. No, listen, uh, man, listen. You've got to say to yourself, God, wait. I'm going to wait on you. Because when the right one comes or when the right one appears, then you will know and you're going to see later. You may not see it now, but after a while, you're going to see, God, it was worth the wait. It was worth the wait. In fact, when you don't wait, you get frustrated and you do dumb stuff. The prodigal son, you know, you know, he, he couldn't wait, you know, yes, his inheritance belonged to him. It was his. He came to his dad and asked him, but it was premature. It wasn't time for him to receive it. And he went out because he think he could manage life on his own. And you know the story. A guy can't come in from a well, um, you know, um, well-off family, if you will, left that palace and went living with pigs and, and started eating pig's food right? But the Bible says he came to himself. Well, you know, finally, finally he got redeemed and everything like that, but he had a lot of losses throughout the process. See, listen, and those losses, the Bible never said he regained those losses. Now, his daddy took him back in and he had a feast for him and so forth, but there were money spent and will never be regained. There were times spent, there were relationships he probably got in, himself into that he had no business getting himself into. Are you following me? So waiting is crucial, and I think it's very important that you don't rush God, that you take your time, whatever you're waiting for. I don't know what you are waiting for, but I hope that you'll understand today was a podcast designed to save you from destruction, to save you from fumbling the ball, to save you from stop making hasty decisions, you know, don't rush God, whatever it is, if it's a man or woman, if it's children you're waiting for, God's going to do it. God's going to do it. I'm, t- <laughs> oh, man, I remember one year, man, I, I've, because I know what it is. I was frustrated. I wanted children. And I started going around asking people, you know, what do you think? And da, 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 da. And uh, a friend, <laughs> be careful who you're talking to, man, because sometimes they mean well, but they'll give you some really crazy, stupid, outrageous advice. So this guy told me, he said, man, uh, Henry, um, maybe, you know, your sperm count is not strong and da, 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 da. And so for the next kind of like, maybe that's possible, you know, and so forth. And he said, man, go to GNC store and I want you to buy this and you drink it, you know, a gallon of it. And you drink it for how many days and you go, <laughs> you're going to be all right. And you're going to, you know, get your strength back and, you know, your sperm count will go up and so forth. Now, he ain't no doctor, nothing. And, you know, I said, okay, fine, went to the GNC store, man, and bought it, man. And the thing, it was in a clear one-gallon plastic bottle like it comes into the water bottle. And you can see it, but it was a little bit, you know, on the thick side. The consistency of it, I guess, you know, was thick and so forth. Um, And I'm looking at it, man, and I started drinking. That thing was horrible. Tastes bad, man. But anyway, because my outcome was, man, I, I, I'm going to have children, man. Look at here. Let me tell you something. When I finished drinking that thing, hours later, Doc, hours later, man, I was crazy. I was high. I started seeing two. One per- <laughs> I, I started seeing double. Man, I almost killed myself because... I am was rushing God. Listen, stop rushing God, man. When you rush God, you now have to make a decision, which is real, because you're seeing double. God, is this you or is that? Just wait on the Lord and stop allowing yourself to be frustrated. I understand it can be, but if you wait on the Lord, you shall renew your strength. You shall mount up with wings like eagles. In other words, you'll soar. You you have the ability to be able to look at things with precision. 
to say that's God or that's not of God. So you hang in there, man, and you be strong. Don't you ever give up. Whatever you're waiting for, it can come to pass. As long as you're living and breathing, well, there's hope. Now, you're dead, that's different. And what does it matter then? But if you're alive and you're watching and hearing this, there's still hope. Don't rush God. Wait in God as you're driving to work this morning, at work, maybe home, at the airport. I don't know where you are watching and listening. God sent this podcast today to tell you, don't get ahead of him. Wait on him. Because when he does it, it is well done. When you do it, you got to figure a way to make it happen and to sustain it. So wait in God. Thanks for hanging with me with me today. I'll see you next time.